Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to my stream. Welcome to another video. Welcome to the worst modeling channel on the internet, according to one particular viewer. Um, which I thank you for your criticism. Thank you for your input. What am I doing today? Well, as you can kind of see, I'm currently putting some decals on the model, specifically the bombs, and more specifically, the bombs for the 132nd scale F4J Phantom 2 by Tamiya. I've kind of skipped ahead in what we're actually doing as far as step-by-step -step progress because I've been working on the weapons because there are a lot of weapons on this thing and uh, as you can see I've got missiles these are the Sparrow missiles I've got Sidewinder missiles and I've got bombs <clears throat> so I just wanted to quickly get some decals onto these bombs before actually working on the project just because decals are the kind of thing where, well, I don't want, really want to bore you guys too much with watching me apply decals. Because decals are kind of time consuming. Some people really hate applying them. For the most part, I don't mind applying decals. Um, they definitely make your model pop as far as visual things. Now normally I don't like to put the decals on my actual finger when I'm doing this, but these particular ones seem to not want to be picked up any other way for whatever reason. So I'll apologize now as you're kind of just going to be looking at the top of my head for the most part of this process. As I do this, I don't know if I got it on camera. The camera's not really my friend when it comes to this little process. But it is what it is. And I just wanted to get this done. I started on this about 20 minutes ago. But I promised that I would stream today live at 10 o'clock PST time and so here I am and so welcome again to the worst modeling channel on the internet which is uh, you know what it's one thing to be the best I think it takes just as much skill to be the worst you know so maybe it's a, a hidden compliment you know, congratulations, you're the worst. I can take it like that. I don't mind. It's fine, it's fine. One, two more. Two more to go, and then I can put these aside. And we're going to start working on the landing gear today. The landing gear is our next step as far as the assembly process goes. And so, I'm going to be doing that today for the next hour or so. <clears throat> Once this is finished, this is the last deco on these bombs. And there we go. So the bombs are now deckled up. <clears throat> All right. So let's put this aside. I don't need this now. <clears throat> so what am I going to do with all my little bombs? Well, I got to put them aside. <sighs> let's see. Got my instructions here. And what am I going to do? I'm going to put them. Top of the box. This is the box, by the way. 
big honking box for this thing. So I'm just gonna put them in here so that they can dry. accidentally touching them and stuff like that while I'm working on the landing gear. It's because with all these, with all the armaments on this plane, I'm kind of running out of room. And, uh, yeah. Alright, let's just put this on the floor. What's next? Okay, so flip this guy over. We've got the wings assembled. We've got these little things. I had to drill holes. They wanted me to drill holes in the way, top of the wings and put these little pieces on. So did that. That's all done. Um, you know, I don't actually remember if I put the engines in last time. <laughs> it's been a it's been over a week, I think. Um, got the landing gear hook on. Landing gear hook arrestor hook, sorry. Put the arrestor hook on there. That's this little cart here. And we've got the pieces added on the side there. And now it's nice. One nice piece and it looks good. And all that good stuff. So, we have to put the little cone on the end. And then we're going to do the landing gear. So we're going to find that cone. J34. J34. That's this guy right here. Worst modeling channel on the internet. Worst. It's hard to not take that personally. <laughs> The funny thing is, the guy said that, but at the same time he said it, he apologized. Sorry. So, he's got to be Canadian, apologizing, and then saying it's the worst, but not saying why. Why is it the worst? I don't know. What makes me the worst? Type in the comments below, what makes me the worst? <laughs> so that's just going to go like that. It seems to line up and match pretty good. Nothing to really complain about as far as fitment. Sun in my eyes right now. There. Just want to make sure all sides line up before I actually put some glue on there. I'm gonna put this stuff. Do it one-handed. <clears throat> no. so easy to do. <laughs> I could have just used a thin set, it would have been fine, but it doesn't really make any difference whether you're stuck using the thick glue or if you've got the thin stuff at hand. There we go, we've got our cone on the end, just like that. done. And that's it for that. Now, we are going to move on to landing gear. I'm going to move this out of the way. Because 
we got nuts to put on. Quite a few pieces to the landing gear. I cannot see what you're doing. The zoom camera showed your arm and blocked the big camera. Oh, sorry, you, Ellen. Maybe I should zoom out a little bit, or maybe I need to readjust the camera angle. Let's see here. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Okay. It's where you're holding it near your shoulder. This shoulder or this shoulder? <laughs> okay, a whole bunch of pieces. Let's see what we need here. I added a little fan and I left it out, so I need this guy. And I need to do some assembly on that. There's a little, there's a clear piece that needs to be added in there. And that piece needs to be painted. They show me a little diagram, I need clear blue, clear red, and they want clear orange, but I don't have clear orange. I do have clear blue and red though. And that's going to be this guy, and this guy. My right shoulder was hidden. Right shoulder, okay. Orange, that's going to have to open up this guy here. such a tiny, tiny little dot of paint on there. That's all it takes. So, I get to paint with my screwdriver. The paint is pretty thick. This paint, this paint in particular, is probably a good 10 years old. Been around for a long, long time. Okay, so the middle one now has some orange on it. going to go at the top of it and then red at the bottom. So that's done. I'll show you guys up close. Let's get this together. Put those away. I am going to need the red again later on in different parts. So that's what I've done there. Can get that to focus. You can see my little red, blue, and orange. So I've painted it on this side, it's actually going to be visible through the clear on this side. 
right there, just through these three tiny little holes that are in this panel. And then the big circle, that's just clear. So I can probably get away with taking this off the tree now. As long as I'm careful not to touch my fresh paint. And then I put that aside because I don't need the clear parts right now. Now, I am tempted to just put this on there right now. I am tempted, but I'm probably going to smear the paint across all three little lights if I do that. So I'm going to set that down for a minute. And while I wait for that, let's take a look at what other parts I need out of this little tree. Oh, I need some wheels. Good fun stuff. These are for the rear. This is also for the front landing gear, but I don't need it yet. That's for the rear. There's our main uh, linkage, I guess. I do think I gotta paint some silver on this at some point for the shock. Yeah, I need to paint the silver on that. There's another one of the rear wheels. I think this actually goes in there. I'm not sure. Okay, more blurry. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I believe, do I need this piece? No, that's part of the rear. There's another one of the rear parts. This, these are actually metal. These are metal, these pieces, but I've painted them white. So everything looks the same, <laughs> pretty much. There's a little shock. That's not what I'm looking for. This is one of the pieces I'm looking for, though. Need one of those. And... Not that. this block, but just not at this moment. I need this little square. There's one of the front wheels. And another one of the front wheels. These are like little backing cups for the front wheels. Like I said, lots of pieces to this thing. And so that's all we need for now. So the rest of these can go back in here. I'm also going to need a cup uh, a screw. What screw do I need? 
It's a 2.8 millimeter. That's not my screw bin. That's my screw bin. So it's a 1.2 by 8. I think that's going to be this one. Yes. Okay, so it's this long and much skinnier one of them all. Okay, so what do we do here? We have to take this. It doesn't look like there's any real order of things where I have to assemble it in a certain order. Maybe just some points where it's going to be easier. So this has a little locator pin to go into a hole on the side there. So, and then this goes on the other side, and that's going to sandwich it together. So, let's get some glue. Ding, 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 ding. Do you want to have it lined up as close as I can? This is going to be my first time actually gluing plastic parts to metal parts. Um, I've never had a, a model kit that actually utilizes metal pieces like this, actual formed metal. So I don't know if this glue is actually going to hold it. I know obviously CA glue will work, um, but whether or not to me is, you know, extra thin cement. Whether this is going to work, I don't know, because I've never done it. So this is going to be a bit of a learning experience, um, but at the same time, it does seem to be holding, so it might work just fine after all. I might be worried about nothing. Okay, so with those two pieces on, I've got that little square block thing that seems to go Looks like it's going to go up into this little notch. Which I could have actually assembled beforehand. So it just sits like that. that piece and that actually looks like about it for the actual base or the this part of the gear I have to put these two wheels like so and put the screw through them so let's take one wheel and put the screw through if I can actually pick it up So, and it takes a very, very small screwdriver. Yeah, that's actually, this bit, this is very fine. That's a small bit, and it is too big, so I have to use an even smaller bit. There we go, that works. So, let's put that through that hole, like so, I'm 
it's kind of strange. There's nothing to... It's like the, the screw doesn't actually thread. does, but I can just push it all the way through. It doesn't get tight. just want to kind of balance it like this. I'll get the other wheel. in a pain. Let's try it this way. Kind of put it in a little crooked so it's actually tight. And now I gotta loosen it a little bit so the wheels will actually turn. And so there's that. Now, I'll be honest, it's only because I did it a little crooked that the screw really bit into the plastic. Because there was no... Boy boy. There was no boy boy. And this is just going to go right in there like that. And become the outside of the wheel. So now I'm going to glue that one in. Same on the other side. It just slides right in there. And so the wheels are on. Now if this were a smaller model, that would be done. But there are actual rubber tires that go on this thing. So I gotta dig those out of the box. So to me, it's nice enough to put actual real rubber tires in the kit. Just like a car model. <laughs> Get out of the bag. There you go. Okay. Boy, boy. Oh, pardon me a moment. Okay, so the wheels, I should be able to just kind of squeeze them and pop them on without much effort. It's the benefits of real rubber. And there we go. The wheels are on, just like that. Focus, please. Come on. Come on, focus. 
work with me. There we go. Thank you. There's the wheels. Just like that. And they turn. Nice. Nice, soft, and cushiony. Okay. So now we have these little guys that have to go on. But I'm being interrupted again. So these two, I actually have to take them off there. I left them on their tree as I painted them, just because they're kind of small and I didn't want to lose them. So that's a junk. These two, they kind of go off to the side a little bit. And they don't line up perfectly. Well, they kind of do. They do and they don't. So I kind of need to hold it in place as I glue it and then put the second one on. Because they act, they're these two arms that stick out and they join together on the side. If I do this, they join together on the side and then as the shock compresses, they do this. Right? That's how it works in real life. Of course, there's no shock to compress on this, so they're just going to be static and sit there. But that's how they work. block on the side here just came loose. I didn't obviously didn't put enough glue on it. So let's add a little more glue to that. And now that I've made the glue liquefied, completely came loose. better and I'm going to respond to my text. Okay, back to this. This goes on a certain way. I'm just trying to orient it the way it is in the picture because you know, one is, it's B39 and B40, but which one, which one is 39 and 40 now that I've taken it off there? You know what I mean? And I think this goes like that. Up there. beauty of the thin set is you get to let go of the piece nice and fast. And you don't have to sit there and try and hold it for two minutes.
might have been better if I waited to put the wheels on. Maybe. Just because it is a little bit hard to manipulate this. That's not right either. Okay. Perfect. The first time I test fitted it, fitted it. not right. It's got to go this way. Sorry if I'm not being very talkative as I'm trying to think my way through this. to be right, even if it doesn't look quite right. It's just the way it's lining up is not, it's not right. Could very well have this piece upside down, so we'll pull it off. No, I definitely had it right the first time. Which is kind of unfortunate because now I'm going to glue it back on. Okay. 
Okay, this should fit, but it's not fitting properly. In order to get it to fit, if I get it to fit with the other piece, then it's not lining up on the actual shaft. And that's why I'm struggling with this. The fit should be much better. So I'm sorry it's taken me so long to figure this out. Throwing some glue on it. Right or wrong, that's where it's sitting. not sitting very sturdy so I'm going to use my thicker glue to fill in that gap. I'll try and show you it's kind of in a tight spot where the gap is so it's hard to see. I'll try and show you on here. I can get it to focus. Okay so it's right up in that little spot right there, there is a gap right there. And it's not lining up. So where the, you know, if this is the shaft, it's shaped like this and it's supposed to go on the shaft like this and, well, you know, much smaller scale here. This is the shaft and it's supposed to go like this, okay, and be tight, but it's actually sitting like this and so it's not really on it's only connecting in one tiny little spot and so I've got to fill in that gap in here and, and try it because it just won't go just the way it's sitting it's and in order to have it connected to that second piece that the bottom piece has a little notch and the top piece has a little pin that's supposed to just go and sit in there and so it's like that, and so those two pieces are connected, but then you go back to the shaft, and the shaft, it's lined up. This piece is lined up perfect, this one is cockeyed. So, I don't know if I have them backwards. The, the, the bottom piece is clearly where it's supposed to be. It's just this top piece is not very happy. So I'll just use my thicker glue and fill in that gap with it and let that dry. And then it'll be a little more sturdy. So that's assembled as far as this goes. Let's go back to our little painted piece. This should be nice and dry and, and ready to be manipulated now and actually put in there. This tiny, tiny little guy. So, this goes in here, a 
like so. And then put a little dab of glue in there so that it stays. over top this little rectangular box thing and that covers it up just like so show you what it looks like with those little, with my little lights, red, blue, and orange, through those little holes. It's kind of hard to see with the, the light on there, but let's see if I can get it to... Mm, kind of hard to show you the different colors, especially with the light, but how about this camera? Are you going to do any better? showing the different colors not really well sorry you'll just have to trust me blue orange and red <laughs> and that's that so that's this piece all right so now we should be able to actually get to putting something on the plane itself I'm gonna need another screw a two by four. Seems to be running out of screws. I have two. They give me two screws in here that are black and the rest are all silver. So I'm not sure what the significance of them is. But I want to make sure I got the correct screw sizes here. So I just want to tweezers. I need two by four. Is that going to be you? Nope, you're six. You're a four. So this guy here, a little silver screw. There's the hole that this goes into, so I should, I don't know if I've got enough play in this to start the screw first, or, or not. So this slides into a little hole, a little slot that's at the front, and then this goes down and then there's a little slot for the screw to go in on the top through there. So just getting that lined up in that slot there, because I'm left-handed, I'm going to turn this around. I don't want my tweezers to scratch my fuselage. So I should be able to get that there. Nice. Nice. All right. So it's a good thing I have a magnetic screwdriver that I can pick up the screw with and line it up. That is so very advantageous to have a magnetic screwdriver for doing things like this. Again, I don't tighten it too tight, just when I'm kind of feeling more resistance, that's tight enough. And there we go. So now that landing gear is in there. If I can get this thing to focus for me. Come on, focus. Thank you. There we go. OK. 
Okay. And we have this piece that we just assembled. This goes on the front here. This goes into the slot there, and then I guess it just rests against it. They don't show any significant mounting point on the actual gear. So I'm just going to kind of let it sit against there. Get it lined up on the bottom and then just let it sit there. things considered, that's a pretty big panel. So that's in. Got our little front landing gear piece that's on there. Now there's a couple of little bibbly bobs that need to go here and here. And we've got these pieces here and here that have got little hook things that go in there. Um, so D2, D is a clear tree. So there should be two of them. That's these two guys here. concave or what? I have to clean it up a little bit here. Where's my knife? My knife is hidden. My knife is really hidden. There it is. Normally this would be something I kind of leave till till last to do um, in case I need to for some reason spray color on the bottom of this because these are clear and they're supposed to be clear. Um, I don't want to spray paint over them with some, you know, for example, if I hadn't already 
spray painted the bottom of this the insignia white and I still needed to do that um, well these would be two pieces I need to mask and so to try and reduce the amount of stuff I need to mask off I just wouldn't install these until I'm almost at the decal stage of the build those. What else we got? I've already put these two guys on. They're supposed to go on there. This guy here and here. And those are going to be painted. The very tips of them are going to be painted black later. And then what else we got? We got these J26 and no. Yeah, J26. Go in these two little holes. And there are some kind of little hook things. So I'm going to find the J tree. J. Right here. So where are you? 26. Looks like hooks. These guys here. Go and they face rearward. And they just go into these little holes. Now, these holes are, they're not round, they're kind of rectangular, so you can get the angle good. And my fingers are too fat to put them in there. Just like that. What might have been a little easier is putting those on the little pieces before actually putting it on the plane. That might have been a little bit easier to do. Or even leaving the pieces on the tree and putting these little hook guys in. I don't think it really takes away from, you know, the difficulty too much. It's not that big of a deal. So that's those. What else we got? That is this page finished. This page is done. I'm just about done myself. Let's flip the page and see what we got next. We have this, this little block that I was telling you about earlier. And then the side door. And then once I got these in, I'm going to call it a day. So this guy, let's see where exactly he goes. I think there's a slot that this drops down into. Yes, right there. And that cleverly covers up the bolt, the screw. So, this here. So we have our screw clearly visible right there, right? This guy, he just drops down right over top of it, like that. And now the screw is hidden. Of course, if you ever want to take it apart, you're kind of screwed, but... So, how do I want to glue this? I am going to use my thicker glue. And do this on both sides, just to make sure all three sides 
good. And it's in there good. Now where did that, I thought I had taken that out of there. Maybe I put it back when I put it all away. I did. Because this has a couple of notches here, but it also is going to line up to a spot on this panel. Where exactly it will do that, I don't know. It does face this way. Put a couple of notches there for it to line up. And it's going to sit just like that. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to put a dab of glue there, there. I'm not going to put any on this or that yet. Now I'll use the thin set on it. thin set because it just it runs into the gaps and cracks and stuff like that that you maybe can't see. It just helps to make sure everything's glued good. Even if it's not a hundred percent lined up. I like that about it. And that is it. That panel is done. And that means I'm done. So the front landing gear is now assembled. And that is complete. And that's how it looks. Everything's done. It's, it lines up really nice. I'm happy with it. Of course, those two pieces right there, that was a challenge, those little um, shock pieces, or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. So what's next? This is going to be next time, but we're actually going to be putting the nose cone on couple of pieces that go on the sides here and I'm gonna have to paint them because they're kind of the uh, half in between the gray and the white so I'll have to mask them off and I'll paint those so that it matches as it goes along the sides here um, and then it's gonna be the rear lining gear but that's gonna be next time yeah yeah, so I'll save that for next time, and uh, yeah, I think that's good enough for today. And uh, so, with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks for coming out. Thank you, Uala, for your comments and uh, uh, helping me out with my camera angle. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, why not head over and over to my Twitch and uh, you can watch me live when I come on. You'll get if you follow me on Twitch, you'll get notifications when I get live, and then you could watch me and you could talk to me just like you Ella did here. Um, and if you want to see still pictures of my builds that I've built in the past, every time I finish a build, um, I take a few pictures of it and I upload it to my Instagram. And so you can check those out if you're interested um, and all that good stuff. And yeah, you guys who follow me on YouTube, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. That is really cool. Even though I am apparently the worst model builder on the internet. Um, that's all right and fine. Um, in the meantime, I've got some painting I still need to do on my Sparrow missiles. It's kind of funny. They didn't want me putting this 
fourth pin, fourth fin on there if I'm going to be assembling it and putting it on the fuselage because they sit like that, right? Um, but the funny thing is they have the holes in the fuselage so the fin can actually fit in there like so and you can drop it in. So, I mean, yeah, okay, so the, it's going to sit like this and so it's you don't, you're not going to see the fin, you're not going to see the fact that it's missing one. It's no big deal. Um, so I get that. But if you did actually assemble all the fins on it and wanted to put it in the fuselage, you can. It's no problem at all. Here, I'll do this one upside down. I'll do this one like this. <laughs> Doink. Just like that. Right? You can. Um, yeah, so I gotta spray paint these and get them all finished up, and then of course more decals, decals on these, decals on the sidewinders. I'm not gonna bore you guys with those details as I de put decals on. It's uh, pretty standard and straightforward. I already bored you for like for 10 minutes at the beginning of this video with that. So anyway, uh, like I said, I'm gonna get going. And uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for coming out, guys. It's really appreciated. Um, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much uh, for following me on this. I hope I give you, can give you some pointers and some help along the way um, as we go. Um, thanks again. And so I will try. I try. I know I always say I try to stream during the week. I get home from work and I'm just tired and I don't feel like uh, really doing any significant work on model um, when I get home from work and during the week, which is why I kind of only do this on Saturdays and Sundays. During the week I just do, uh, I might spend 20 minutes um, just doing minor details or something like that and that's about it, that's about the most I do during the week on these things. Um, or, you know, spray painting and that's about it. Anyway. I'm going to go, and uh, thanks again, and uh, so we will see you all in the next one.